that you messed up the interview, and he was shocked. He's like, oh, I thought it went well. So, I, I, again, I, there's some things that have come out during the search that, uh, you know, since the hiring, uh, there was a report about Cam Cameron, uh, the thing about uh, the thing about Kyle, uh, just some of the stuff that's been was either prematurely reported or, or reported wrong. And, and I know that, uh, you know, the difficult jobs that, that everybody here has, and, and it's it's it's. Uh, Let's get it right and, and, and get it first, and, and uh, I know that's a priority. But, but sometimes I think get, get it first is, is, has taken taken uh, you know top billing over over uh, getting it right in some could, situations. Could Kyle have had a private conversation with Banner? I, I don't believe that he did. I mean, Joe came in and sat down uh -huh. uh, and was in for part of the interview, but uh, to my knowledge, they did not have a private conversation. Did you have a list of? Offensive coordinators in your mind that you wanted to talk to if you ever became a head coach, and I did. was he absolutely, one of those guys? absolutely was on it, and that, that was a and that, that, that was that was a deep list. I mean, there were there were a lot of guys that, that we put a lot of time and effort and research, and, and uh, but as far as guys that were available that had experience as a coordinator, six years in of calling plays, that uh, my role on the defense, you know, I'll be very active and and will be likely to be calling defenses. But I think it's very difficult. It would have been very difficult to have a first-year NFL coordinator on the other side. So that was that was a big part of it for me. I mean, there are some real quality, quality coaches out there that, that uh, to me, were very qualified. John Filippo had an outstanding interview. Uh, but it was one of those things at the end of the day, uh, just Kyle's experience, like I said, having called plays for six years and, and having, I think, for those six years, they were they were in the top ten in, in yardage. Uh, that was something that was that was uh, very impressive to me. Mike, are you concerned... Um, you knew, when you we talked to you uh, on January 23rd, you talked about coaching. Are you concerned that um, the administrative duties you're going to have as a head coach are going to eat up a lot of your time that will take you away from actual coaching? Well, I, I, I have some great resources in the league. Doug Marone obviously just went through it this past year. I, I was side by side with Rex when, when he went through it. I'm um, very close with Chuck Pagano, who is in Indy. He and I have already had some conversations. I'm going to I'm going to sit down with him out at the combine and get his advice on on how to handle that that critical first year. But but I think there there is an administrative part of it, and but I think you have to to find a way to balance it. That there are going to be times during the season where. Uh, that I won't be available for any of that administrative stuff, that I'm going to be locked in the room with, with the defensive staff and, and we're going to be working on game plans or, or I'm going to spend some time with the offensive staff uh, to, to help them from things that I see from the, uh, from the opponent's defense. So I just think it's a matter of, of prioritizing the time. And, and part of the interview process, I had said, I, I, I want to do as much football as possible. I, I did not want to get involved in maybe managing some of the other areas where some other head coaches in the league ha have an influence on some of the support staff and some of the other things going on. I, I didn't want to get into that business of managing anything other than the coaching staff and the team. And I think that was well received. Uh, and that's something I, that I plan on doing. Well, I think Kyle, Kyle has, in his six years, he's done a lot of different things as a coordinator. And the fact you don't really know what your quarterback situation is going to be or necessarily what you're going to be able to do with, with that quarterback because of it. How much did his flexibility history with doing different things play into your thinking as far as what you were looking for in a coordinator? It was, it was a big part of it. He, he approaches offense the way we approach defense. I think you heard it both from and maybe in different ways from, from Jim and from Kyle and that, that we're going to study the players first. Uh, and then we're, then we're going to go ahead and, and match the system to fit their talents and at the same time identify what we're not doing well and get those areas up to speed. So Kyle's proven in his six years that, that he can have one of the leading rushing attacks, he can have one of the leading passing attacks. He could have a veteran quarterback, he could have a rookie quarterback. He could have a marquee receiver and an Andre Johnson, or he could get it done with, uh, with some other guys that, that, uh, that, that aren't Pro Bowl types, all different types of offensive linemen. He's done it with different running backs. That was appealing to me. That his system over over all those changes uh, was able to adapt uh, and be successful. Why did you think Jim? Why, why was Jim such a good choice for you? Is it a level of comfort? Uh, the fact that he knows kind of what you you want. You guys have been together for so many years. Yeah, absolutely. It's a trust. And, and again, he, he was he was with me. I mean, we did every game plan together in New York. We did every game plan together in Buffalo. Uh, he was with me when, when I built call sheets. I mean, we we talked about. Uh, that, that he and I spend so much time together. It was very similar to the situation that I had with Rex, that I was Rex's right-hand guy for those four years that Rex was the coordinator in, in Baltimore, and Jim was able to do it with me for five. 
So I, I don't worry about the inexperience thing at all, uh, that, that he and I are going to do it together. Um, you know, I've, and I've, I've even used the phrase that it's it's like training wheels, similar to something Rex did, called the defenses in 2009, and then and then after that, uh, that, that I that I took that responsibility over, and I think it'll be similar. And those that that situation can change at any time. We might even get to the point during the season where I might call first and second down, and, and he might have the third down call ready to go. Because once the, once the call sheet is set up. We like to call the game on Friday and on Saturday and go through all the different scenarios, the what ifs. So a lot of times, it's you're, you're reading off. It's a flow chart that you're reading off of your your call sheet. The situation's already set up. That hey, if this is the left hash mark in the red zone and it's third and third and two to six, this is going to be our call. So it's already been determined. So sometimes calling the game can can be a, a little bit overrated. How did he go from playing for your dad to with you in the NFL? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jim and I did not know each other. We were years apart uh, in, in high school. He was actually recommend. He got into coaching, uh, and he was recommended to me by by my dad. And he was actually in the in the Maryland area. He was working at Towson, and I was with the Ravens. So there were I had opportunities to bring him over, and he sat in on our meetings, and he was out on the field and observed some of our camps. And uh, I think w- one of the best things I've done as a coach, looking back, is was when Rex was starting to interview, and I knew I had done a lot of the quality control work for Rex, I was going to need somebody somebody to do that for me if Rex ever got a head coaching job and I became the coordinator. So I knew I needed to train somebody to do that. Jim was still coaching college. He was actually at Eastern Michigan. He and I got together. I gave him uh, the Excel program, the Excel files we were using, the PowerPoint, how we structured practice, how we did our game plan stuff. So he was already working. He was actually using that in college. And then when, when Rex got the job in New York, uh, and I made that phone call. I mean, he hit. I mean, it was seamless. He hit the ground. He already. He already knew we were. We were so far ahead from that standpoint. And then uh, from then on, we've just been. I mean, he, he's just been by my side. And it's one of those things. I think we we see the game the same. Uh, but but Jim's not afraid to tell me. I mean, it's he, he's not afraid to tell the emperor he's not wearing any clothes. I mean, he'll he'll. He and I have had some heated arguments. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I know because it's it's uh, and, and a lot of times he's right, and and, and I'm and I'm not uh, egotistical enough to, to, to say, hey, listen, we're going to do it my way. He's uh, he he knows how to approach me about things, and and uh, if, if something he feels is being done wrong, he, he's going to uh, he's going to look to get a change. He's not a guy that's just a yes man. I, I don't want to be surrounded by guys like that. There's going to be some heated exchanges. I think that's healthy. So you guys didn't know each other back home at all. I knew of him. Yeah, I knew of him, but I, but uh, he he would have been. I think he was like class of '97, and I was class of '84. So really got to know him at first through my dad. Mike, well, obviously, uh, Kyle, you know, addressed his relationship with RG3 in last year. And how it was a challenge and it was tough. Did you have to be assured in the interview? I mean, was that a, a subject that did you have to be assured? We about talked about it. I didn't feel like I needed to be him. assured. I mean, he opened up about it and, and talked about it at length, and, and it was something that. Uh, I, I didn't think was was an issue at all. I mean, he was very passionate about it, and, and he talked about the relationship in, in similar terms. I think when things get negative, when things go bad, I think a lot of the ne- the negative things are exaggerated. When when I left New York to go to Buffalo, it was I had a falling out with Rex. It's, it's absolutely not true, but I think people just tried to to fill the gaps in with well that that must be the case because he left. Uh, I think it's a very similar situation that that. Uh, you know that things weren't going well, and and, and people wanted to, 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 I think, exaggerate how how bad that relationship was. But they did take some blame for playing RG three when he was injured. That you know, I, mean, I assume you again. I I, I doubt have, I doubt not wanting to speak on it because I wasn't there. But but uh, when it was all said and done, and we heard about it, that that it was was nothing that I felt was a was a anything that reflected poorly on Kyle. Why did you uh, not feel the need to hire a coordinator before some of the other positions on the offensive staff? Well, we, we were competing with some other teams for some quality coaches, uh, and it was one of the situations where I knew that, that the reputations of the guys I was looking to hire, whether it was a Dow Loggins at, at quarterbacks or whether it was a Brian Angelico at tight ends, that we were going to lose those guys to some other teams. I, I knew that they were outstanding coaches, outstanding teachers, well-respected in the league, and that they would get along with any coordinator that we hired. What I what I purposely did though is I left several of the spots open because I, I wanted the I wanted it to be a blend of I did not want to play, for lack of a better word, and I've used this before, fantasy football with the coaching staff and just hire a bunch of guys and then hire the coordinator and say here's your staff. <coughs> so it was going to be a blend. I had to reach out and I felt we needed to, to to get those guys before we lost them. 
but then I purposely held spots open that, that, uh, that Kyle and I could bring guys in, interview, uh, and then come to a consensus decision. So he felt comfortable that he had guys that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that he was good with on the staff mixed with the guys we'd already hired. You mentioned the Kyle's balance, that he's been able to run the ball and throw the ball. The fact that he's had some the success he has had with the running game, how important is that to you? I mean, you know, we hear so much it's a passing league and everybody's got to throw the ball, but the fact that he led the league in rushing two years ago. Sure, and I, I think what's, what is one of the most appealing things about the offensive system is, is the play action off the run, that I think Kyle's done an outstanding job of, of marrying the play actions off the runs in that game plan, that it all looks the same. Uh, and again, I think it's critical when, when you're in a in Northeast Ohio late in the year that your your offense has to be all weather. You have to be able to run the ball. It is a passing league, but I think you have to have the ability to run the ball to, to close games out. Uh, and if the if the weather does turn, that that uh, that you need to find an alternate way to uh, to score points. Was that game here in 2012 one of the ones you watched on film? 